so uh, as i told today's agenda is to study oscillators uh there is one more way of uh, making the oscillator is you can keep op amp in positive feedback if it is in positive feedback it's always oscillating and your output will reach vdd or ground and your output might be like this if you have a square wave created by this op amp in positive feedback you are going to call that particular configuration as multi vibrator but that multi vibrator is known as bi stable multi vibrator having square wave or rectangular wave as the output one more is mono stable where output is just one trigger input that will be the output and third one is a stable a stable is the one where it might have square wave or one, uh, mono shot at the output but just a stable multi vibrator needs vdd and ground or you can say power supply it does not need any input no input is required so this is the thing which is happening when i want op amp in positive feedback so if you are keeping op amp in positive feedback it will become uh, oscillator for sure or smith trigger it will always give you square wave as the output vdd or ground but what if i want to keep op amp in negative feedback and i want to make that as oscillator so what do you think how can i make op amp in negative feedback but oscillating one how to do that phase margin is less than 45 degree then it's ring always let's make it very worse phase margin or if you remember if you remember we wrote uh, a z a divided by 1 plus a 0 k that's the transfer function in closed loop if a 0 k is equal to minus 1 then this transfer function is infinite infinite means v out by v in is infinite and your uh, output will reach vdd or ground at the plus side or minus side right so this is one way or you can say that from here you can write down for this one if transfer function or a0k is minus 1 the phase of this one will be 180 degree right we can modify this one and we can say that we are interested only in magnitude plot so we are going to call this one as mod of this one and this is one this whole theory was given by guy called barkhausen and he gave two criteria to oscillate it's compulsory to satisfy both the criteria that a0k equal to 1 mod of a0k equal to 1 or maybe much higher and the phase is 180 degree if this is satisfied then your system is unstable system may have more phase margin and system will oscillate right but you may have a question so you can write down these two these are the like uh, you can say the silver bullets which we are going to use for every oscillator design just remember these two and one of them is satisfying but another one is not satisfying then things will not work then it will not oscillate right and uh, this is the important question people ask when oscillator will oscillate so the answer is it will follow barkhausen criteria if it is in negative feedback both the criteria needs to be follow if it is in positive there is no requirement of any criteria it will oscillate for sure after some times it will reach vdd or ground for sure because it's a positive feedback right but you might have question what is the role of an oscillator where i am going to use it 
so oscillator if you are using microprocessor intel processor your computer or any digital system where you may have seen this kind of symbol you have seen it right all btex all mtex they have seen it so this symbol signifies that it is going to have one clock signal it might be negative as triggered positive as triggered or anything any case you will have clock which is like this but how to get this kind of signal that kind of signal is actually generated by an oscillator whose output is let's say sine wave something like this and after some times it might reach but while designing this nobody can give you guarantee that this will be the duty cycle or on and off time so t on t off and duty cycle we understand all this terminology yes or no yes yes rakshit so t on is this that much time is t on that much time is t off duty cycle t on by t on plus t on uh, t off right so that will give you duty cycle sometimes we expect to have the 50 percent duty cycle for square wave for different number for rectangular right and when we are designing this every instance we may have different t on okay let's make it. this t on and this t on may be different this t off and this t off may be different or it's moving here and there so, so So we are expecting to get the square wave completed here but it takes little bit higher time in this case let's say we are expecting to complete here but it took lower time this kind of shift extra shift is known as phase noise you will have only phase difference and it's in within some range indirectly you can say that this delta phase with respect to time it's a jitter right it's same thing but jitter is the one which is a popular phenomena used in digital system in analog system we are calling it phase noise when it's that time is very very small t tends to zero then uh, this becomes d phi by dt and when it is max we can call this one as jitter in digital but both numbers are same similar thing so when you have been asked to uh, design an oscillator or clock for the system you will be asked that i need that much t on that much t off that much duty cycle with so much of phase noise so what do you do huh duty cycle is ratio between uh, these two like t on divided by t on plus t off that's the definition of duty cycle so we are expecting to have the 50% duty cycle generally for square wave if it is 50% means t on divided by t on plus t off will give you half right so it's in percentage it's multiplied by 100 so it's measured in percentage that's a, a basic uh, thing right you you must have uh, studied this somewhere right and text so for btex those who have not studied you can write down this equation right mostly in communication you will use these uh, these terms very frequently when you study uh, when you are going to study communication this will be useful for sure these 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 even sometimes phase noise depends which communication you are learning analog or digital right so this oscillator will be used or it's 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 a heartbeat for all the digital system if you are designing flip flop if you are designing microprocessor if you are designing some uh, algorithm anything it will work at particular time instance and for that we need oscillator so we analog designer has to design it because that's the system coming from outside and that quantity is known is actually analog quantity one more thing just to make this phase noise better 
because this oscillator is open loop system there is one more thing which is important to learn after this and that is known as phase lock loop so this phase will be locked in particular uh, particular time and that is a uh, uh, that is uh, that will be in negative feedback when we are going to keep oscillatory negative feedback but right now we are not studying this it is little bit higher than oscillator but oscillator can be taught in uh, one lecture but phase lock loop needs at least 9 to 10 lectures it, it requires so many things right so it's a starting point if you like it you can read about phase lock loop and uh, phase lock loop is a uh, very commonly used in uh, uh, are you using f tune you know f tune this kind of button used to come in uh, in the remote control tv remote control if you do that f tune it will find out which channel should be coming right uhf vhf some different and you, you can use this same button in uh, finding out the radio stations so which station is matching right with the frequency where it's finding the resonance it will stop and it will show you the uh, it will give you the amplitude signals right so that is the function of phase lock loop or oscillator but oscillator is in open loop it's not going to be used standalone just to have this square wave we need one more thing which is phase lock loop when we are going to keep oscillator in feedback so right now we are studying only oscillator in open loop now this is known to us that if there is a okay by the way i am using behzad razavi but not blue colored the red colored book the name is microelectronics fundamental we have plenty of books available in our our library if you want to read it this is very simple book and uh, you will like uh, actually analog if you read this book okay so to understand oscillator for pll you need to go for blue book which is the next level of the course so this is already known to us if it is in feedback h of s divided by 1 plus h of s that's a negative feedback right if it is positive just negative we knew that but we are discovering the circuit which is going to be negative feedback but it will oscillate so let's learn that for oscillating we have only two golden rules one it has to be equal to one to get transfer function infinity because we have h of s divided by one plus h of s as a transfer function when h of s becomes minus one at s equal to g omega one and when the phase becomes 180 degree system will oscillate but it requires both the condition to be satisfied you cannot make one system is one one thing is satisfied and another is not satisfied then it will not work okay now one more thing so there is a, those people who have studied uh, oscillator maybe in your btech somewhere you studied somewhere right later but there is one uh, wrong theory which is or maybe uh, uh, there is a gap between understanding between other book which i read and when i read behzad raza i realize that it's not only 180 degree it's saying that 180 degree this barcosin criteria should be following only for one loop going from you know x to y without feedback without feedback it has to be 180 but when you are keeping the loop it needs to be having another 180 degree so you need in total 360 degree to get oscillation if it is 180 degree you will never get oscillation i did it in a laboratory and it actually theory works with 360 degree so it needs 180 from open loop and 180 degree when you are closing the loop okay 
So now let's say we are fond of common source amplifier where we have M1 with some resistive load. Can you tell me what is the gain of this one? GM1 times RD parallel RO1. This gain is always so this is H of S, right? And H of S mod of this one, it was minus, but is always greater than one, right? So it's following first bar position criteria. But can you tell me what is the phase of this one? Not phase margin. What is the phase of this particular setup? Hmm? 180 y 180. Okay, minus sign. Okay, so this is minus 180 because of the loop. Okay, minus because of from here to here. But there is one more thing. One more pole is there. So you are reaching 270, but not reaching 360. So if you are keeping this in negative feedback, the system is always stable, and your output is like this. Right? It will not oscillate. Like. It's like a, what we want to make it is we want to design a swing where somebody is not here. If he is not here, then system is a stable. I don't want this guy. It has to be automatically giving you oscillations. So I want to make A stable. So in that case, what we can do, let's use, okay. Before going to that, uh, let's uh, look at a few more things. So these are the popular oscillators. Uh, one is ring oscillator. We are going to study this. When uh, you may have different inverters in, in the cascade, and then you are feed, feeding back. I asked you one question earlier that can you do this one and getting oscillation this same thing by the way can you see this particular setup is exactly same because this is also inverter this is also an inverter where input is if it is vdd it should go to ground but when you come back it will not ground to vdd directly it will not change it because there is no oscillation condition satisfied because there is no 180 degree, uh, degree plus 180 degree in total. So this will not oscillate. You can try in laboratory if you want. You can keep one inverter and keep one inverter back in feedback. Neg this is negative feedback. Right? So in total it's 180 degree ratio only. But so those kind of thing is actually ring oscillated. This is one of the fastest one. You can achieve several gigahertz. Right, so microprocessor memories and there are many digital applications we are going to use it. But there is one more oscillator which is very good in terms of phase noise. So if you want to achieve the best phase noise, then you should use LC oscillator. And this is the one which is actually used in your mobile and uh, most of the transceiver system where you need hundreds of gigahertz with very good phase noise. The only problem is L is, is a big quantity when you are uh, implementing it, it will take more area, right? So that's why people like ring oscillator. Otherwise, LC or oscillator is the best one. And there are some variation of that name, cross-coupled oscillator, call pit. But we are going to study the os LC oscillator, which we have studied in school and just how to use it. It's a very simple way. And that is the one which is used everywhere. And if time permits, I'll try to talk about these, these two or these three. Okay, so I'll try to complete these two. So it will give you uh, the feeling why they are oscillating. But are you following till now? Okay, so let's understand it will start oscillating when it will follow Barkhausen criteria. And when there is a circuit for a unity gain, it will have desired oscillations of frequency if there is 180 degree phase shift plus 180 degree of loop and gain is gain is greater than one. <coughs> so one more thing we should understand always remember you should not design a system which is going to give you exactly 180 degree phase shift. 
might be it might give you 179 for different pvt or 178 and it will not oscillate for just for one or two degree it will not oscillate so we have to make a little bit higher than that maybe to 190 200 degree 210 let's make it higher so that it will oscillate for sure and similarly keep the loop gain much higher than one not exactly one let's make it a little bit higher than one so that it will oscillate for sure and if somebody will give you to design oscillator following things he will uh, tell you since your manager will tell you that i need this frequency of oscillation or this is my application and your uh, oscillator will go to this particular application like uh, uh, mobile application transceiver so you have to find out the frequency of oscillation and that frequency of oscillation you have to make again he will tell you that what is the output amplitude means vdd and ground values will be given to you i should say vdd and vss rather than vdd and ground he will tell you that uh, what value of vdd and what value of vss will be there moreover he will tell you that power consumption and the most important part is how much error your system can tolerate which is noise basically it's phase noise and we understand what is phase noise it's with respect to time it's not following same one to zero or zero to one transition so it's time is changing and the silver bullet is you have to follow bar percent criteria and it is having two loop gain has to be much higher than one and phase has to be greater than 180 degree plus 180 degree of loop when you are reaching that there is no problem okay now the first oscillator is ring oscillator i kept one inverter in feedback but it's not oscillating gain is higher than one but it's not following another criteria 180 degree phase shift Let's shift 180 degree phase it's not following so this will never oscillate now i can do one thing let's skip two oscillator what do you think will it oscillate or not why not the gain is higher Look. the phase is phase is not following that's one thing right phase is not following but the most important thing you have to see every common source amplifier are actually an inverter will it oscillate if this is one this is zero this is one this is one this is zero. it doesn't matter whether it's bar percent criteria or not this will never oscillate because it's a latch it will latch whatever you have given to him he will never leave. so while designing ring oscillator remember even number of stages will never help you to get oscillation you have to look for odd number of stages and that's why when you are having three stages it will definitely oscillate because your gain is much higher there are three gain so gm cube then rd cube let's forget about ro so this is the gain and there are three poles three poles are creating from 0 to 270 having 180 more so it's more than 360 degree in total so it will oscillate for sure there is no problem right any problem in oscillating this this one yeah tirupati no. I, i'll follow it right if you think that uh, you are not following please let me know this is not part of course so i'm just teaching you so that you can answer uh, the interview question if it is required right. in analog companies they are asking for sure they will ask you okay so if you want to derive or you want to do little bit of math which is very easy math will follow only one thing bar question criteria which says that mod gh if there is no mod h is equal to one or greater than one and phase of h of e omega has to be 180 degree right so what i have done 
as I know that there is one, two, and three capacitors. It's not connected to function generator, so there will be three poles, right? Three poles means each may contribute from zero to minus ninety, zero to minus ninety, and so on, right? Or you can say that I am only interested when it reaches ninety degree, right? We we don't uh, want the so if it is like this, I don't want to uh, actually be in this region. I want to be here directly, right? 90 degree. So each pole will give you minus 90, minus 90, minus 90, right? And that equation will follow minus 10 inverse R D C D omega 1 with Q. So it's three times. Right. For bar constant criteria, he is equating with 180, so it becomes minus 60 degree. Because so each pole is going to contribute if by 60 degree your system will oscillate. And from there you can find out omega 1. Omega 1 is uh, square uh, root root of 3 divided by RDC. So this is the frequency of oscillation if you choose rd and cd wisely you can achieve what frequency of oscillation do you need it's a combination of rd and cd if i know this one i can keep same thing in the transfer function which was so the transfer function if i'm writing and if all rd are same m1 m2 m3 all are same then you will have transfer function as gm rd q divide by 1 plus so what value what do you think pole value rd hmm? yeah rd parallel r o what and c right so that has been kept here and we have used the you know magnitude of that equated with 1 and I found out if GMRD is equal to 2, this system will oscillate. So these are the two criteria found out using bar procedure. There are only two things you need to do. You have to write phase equation and you have to write magnitude equation. Phase has to be equated with 180, magnitude has to be equated with 1. That's the boundary condition after which it will oscillate. Right? So this is the simple uh, ring oscillator. Variants of ring oscillator you can make. Some people like this kind of inverter, right? It's very popular. People are using in digital. Some people who have studied in our lab, they used to make current as a load, which is giving you more gain, right? So accordingly, you can have variants of ring oscillator. Whichever you like, you can design it or whichever will give you lower phase noise, lower power consumption and your desired frequency of oscillation with VDD and VSS that will be, that should be used in my opinion, right. And that's how you have to design ring oscillator, right. So any problem in this one? So if you uh, go to company after uh, your graduation and if you join this team, they will give you to design ring oscillators for at least for next three months <laughs> because you can learn cadence and other things so those who are coming from a different uh, part of country where they, they are not studying cadence and other things so they spend time on learning tool also so that's why they are giving something three four months just to design the ring oscillator <laughs> Next thing might be the, the LC oscillator, which I told you it will be useful in transceiver system when you want to design it for better phase noise and hundreds of gigahertz. If you need to have the hundreds of gigahertz of oscillation, you need to use LC oscillator. Only negative part is area is very high because inductor layout is large. So 
so that's a bad part but this is the theory which we have studied in school and rather than going in um, going in terms of voltage and current if you remember in school time we used to design or derive an impedance and we used to call this one as impedance driving point or maybe function right so instead of going in voltage and current let's derive impedance because that is more easier l and c are in parallel when they are in parallel we are going to call this one as a tank system or tank lc tank system this is a is it k okay <laughs> so this parallel combination is going to give you this thing right and going to give you this thing and if you replace laplace operator with j okay you are going to see this final equation right the only thing is here if i want to find out oscillation frequency or if i want to create an oscillator using lc it's going to oscillate at particular frequency can you tell me the oscillation frequency what is that in your school you have found out the resonance right what is that so you have to equate the denominator with zero if this is going to be zero your impedance become infinite if impedance is infinite your gain will be infinite because that's the output i am going to use this lc at the output side so instead of this just now we have done this one right this is one in one this common source if i replace this rd with l and c some lc oscillator will be created so right now we are not going into that that detail but it will be in the next slide you will understand it's again a common source amplifier it's an inverter but the load is different where you are going to make the different uh, condition of oscillation so you know that you will have the highest impedance when new uh, denominator becomes zero and that is 1 by root lc in radian per second right okay so all well till now this is also we have studied you have studied this side of maybe diagram where mod z in versus omega at omega 1 which is equal to 1 by root lc you have infinite impedance and it's not coming in my uh, my screen so it's shown it's infinite it's going infinite right but we agree that in analog we cannot go beyond vdd or below vss so your output will be either vdd and ground it will saturate it then right but can you understand this particular diagram if no then you should again revisit the z1 of j omega now look at the phase if you want to look at the phase the fast and shortcut is bode plot in bode plot how many zeros and how many poles you are seeing in your system there is one zero you see there is one zero and two poles so if you draw the bode plot in decibel it will look like this one right one zero and going to two poles down but in linear scale it looks like this one similarly for phase we know that one zero contributing 90 degree because that zero is available at origin so it will be always 90 degree two poles so 0 to minus 180 degree am i going fast or i follow you right because one pole is having minus 10 inverse omega by omega p two pole one more 10 inverse omega by omega p and at zero and infinity you can find out what are the value at zero frequency it's zero degree at infinity minus 180 because of two poles in total 
if we add everything together at low frequency 0 degree and sorry at low frequency 90 degree and at high frequency minus 90 because pole was contributing 90 degree it will get offset in 0 to minus 180 degree right which was given by poles two poles and this is by 0 at origin that that has been drawn here and there is a sharp line just look at this that is not like this one because everything is going at ideal uh, ideal domain where omega 1 is going to give you the infinite resonance that's why this is happening so if you want to look at the, its derivation it needs a little bit time so i'm skipping that why exactly this line but that might be a question in your interview so try to find out this question uh, answer of this question but this is the ideal one but in reality your inductor may have resistance either in series or in parallel that's why this is known as rp rp is parallel r1 is actually it should have been written rs this is the standard way of the notation series resistance and parallel resistance you don't know what kind of resistance you will have but that resistance will be l1 square divided l1 square omega square divided by r1 if you look at or if you find out the impedance of this 2 z2 impedance of this this 2 z2 and equate them with the original impedance then you will get this equation which is a quite easy its derivation it's given in a, in bezad rezavi if you want to see but main crux of the story is if you have extra rs or rp now you are not going to see the sharp transition but you are going to see some roll roll out going from plus 90 to minus 90 the equation everything will be same and similarly this resonance will stop itself at rp rather than infinity you can look at the equation again okay the written so there will be one more extra term which will give you only rp okay you have to look at that oh it's written here right so if you keep omega is equal to 1 by root lc at the end you will have just rp right and this is the oscillating condition so this is one more thing you have to remember so if you are giving the answer if it is lc tank circuit for oscillation it might be infinity or it might be rp so you should know that if the network is lossy and that will be the case always this is the reality the one which we have studied just now which has sharp transition this is not the reality this will never happen every inductor will have some intrinsic resistance either in series or in parallel right so that will give you this rule of and it will limit uh, the impedance at rp okay are you following till now is there any problem one more uh, good thing about lc oscillator is we have kept lc in parallel just look at this tank which is in parallel both are energy saving uh, elements one is for in uh, current one is for voltage so if this tank is full after sometimes this gets discharged on inductor and inductor will discharge in uh, capacitor that's how they are mutually actually transferring voltage current voltage and current to voltage and that's how you have the oscillation the only thing is it needs one criteria to be satisfied which is barcosan criteria which says that if the gain is greater than one and phase is more than 180 degree with loop one more 180 degree then your system will oscillate otherwise this is just an uh, inductor and capacitor in parallel it will never oscillate it needs to get some startup or somebody who will ask capacitor to get discharged or inductor to get charged means somebody has to ask the current from this tank circuit 
and note that every time we will have resistance in parallel if <coughs> this current and voltages are not being asked by somebody externally even though you will start the oscillation after some times it will die out and it will be zero because there is a resistance in in parallel for that you need vdd and ground you cannot avoid vdd and ground and that's how this a stable multi vibrator definition came it requires vdd and ground because it will provide current either either uh, push the current or pull the current right for both the cases vdd and, uh, VDD and ground are required but no extra input is required that will be derived from your transistor circuit which is amplified or will amplify this amplitude if it is required so now how to create that condition let's keep that impedance as a load so i kept lc tank as a load with common source con configuration it's same thing now the gain will be minus gm time z2 of s in parallel of let's say r01 but i dropped r01 i don't consider that and saying it's this load which is going to play the role we know that it's rp at omega 1 equal to 1 by root lc other than that it's zero or very low value and similarly for phase at omega 1 it's minus 180 and from minus 90 to minus 270 it's getting low loss right because other things are not there or if it is there it merged with that if there is a capacitor it will merge here in this capacitor because this miller will go in there and vdd will become ground so this will be here and this vn right now let's assume that it's connected to function generator for a time being just to start with because we are not keeping into feedback we are going to do this one after some time but if it is not there and if there is wheel then what is going to happen that is what i am explaining so there will be little bit of this lnc will be here and there because of the reason that this capacitor this inductor and this resistance are actually get influenced by the parasitics of this m1 right so this is one thing now my question might be if such lc oscillator is kept in feedback will it going to give you oscillations or not gain is gm times rp might be higher than one right it's higher than one what about this one this is minus 270 right it's not going to give you 360 in total so this will not oscillate so what i can do let's make two stages two stages and one is connected to the next one and the output of the total uh, both the uh, both the oscillator will come back and connect it to the input this is called two stage cs so in total you have 540 degree gain was already achieved by one stage but because of two stage now gain is much higher than even one right or it's so much so it's oscillating commonly this is drawn as this one so uh, right now do not consider this one so it's it's drawn with input output of this one is connected to input of this one and output of this one is connected to input of this one this configuration is known as cross coupled so this configuration of uh, transistors are known as cross coupled with lc as a load that's why it's known as cross coupled lc oscillator which is oscillating whose gain is known to be gm times rp square and you know where the poles and zeros are right so this particular setup have one problem the current required by this circuit this circuit is not known to me it's depending on the what oscillation condition is created by x and y so right now i need to fix that current 
if I need to fix that current, what I can do, I can keep one current at the tail, which is going to be realized using current mirror circuit. And the current will be fixed now. Sometimes ISS by 2, ISS by 2 or going exactly 0 or so it's from 0 to ISS and that will decide the slope or decide the slew rate, right? And slew rate is nothing but effective capacitance looked here. So I by C effective will decide the slew rate, how much fast or slow your system will go. So that will always oscillate, X and Y are complementary to each other, they will never become same or you can say that it will be always 180 degree phase shift or they are non-overlapping clocks. Sometimes we need both the clocks, so you are using both the clocks, not one. In your system, sometimes you need clock, sometimes you need clock bar. Right? So this is cross coupled LC oscillator. Are you following till now? Everything is fine. If I want to find out the uh, condition or to find out what value of L1, C1, RP should be created, then I need to look at the phase equation. And after phase equation, I will have the oscillation frequency here. And from oscillation frequency, I will keep that in the magnitude equation. Then I'll get what value of gain is required or what value of GM is required. That will decide the W by L. And that will be oscillating now. Generally, if I am designing, then I keep, you know, I keep on increasing W and L by the parametric and within 5 minutes, I'll get the answer <laughs> for the oscillation. Right? You know also this technique. You know, right? Parametric analysis. In cadence, there is one technique called parametric analysis where you can make this variable and you just keep on increasing and you can find out what frequency is coming. Right? And there is a direct function called frequency. So that will tell you the frequency of this particular node. Everything. Even it will tell you the phase noise. So once frequency is fixed, you should change L by parametric and within one hour you have oscillator design. If you understand these numbers. Right? So it's all good or you want to learn phase shift oscillator. It's up to your efficiency, otherwise there is no problem. So this ISS is uh, DC current. It's a DC current. It's a DC. This current must flow from RC. Hmm? This current will flow from R and C. Yes. L and C also. L and C also. Yes. R, R is the uh, extra parallel resistance uh, available in inductor. Sir, uh, how do we construct uh, inductor and layout? Okay, so then we need another lecture. Generally, inductor is like we uh, studied in our uh, like VTEC first year course IC161 that if there are two plates and if you are working at frequency which is very high, then parasitics will be created. So, what we have done on a breadboard. We have plates are available already like vertical or horizontal. So we measured what capacitor is created at particular frequency and then we made a wire with certain design. So through the parasitic we did it. Right? We created LC uh, uh, tank filter or there are many RLC right to, by finding out these parasitics so these are just with wires and plates this is wire this is not real inductor wire of normal wire but uh, this, uh, this is not allowed in the layout yeah it's allowed you have to make the spiral so you have to make spiral inductor on, on PCB on in cadence 
with different metal right with with respect to ground or mobility so if it is with respect to ground then it will give different uh, value of uh, inductor right now he is designing one inductor but it's not easy thing it might be one mtech project also sometimes <laughs> it depend on what value you need with what how much uh, parasitic resistance and that's so there are many things are there people are doing this in microwave engineering actually right so so is it possible to make inductor at micro level micro level yes micro is possible micro henry is possible Area wise. Area wise. Micro means how much micro? One by one micro, then it's not possible. Micro meter. Yeah, no, not possible. One by one micro is not possible. But uh, or even if you will make it, that inductor value is not going to be used. So generally, what we are doing uh, when we are making the layout, let's assume that this is your circuit, which we are going to call call it core. and around it i'm making a vdd complete box if you are making the complete box this will create inductor itself so to do that or to remove that we are using another metal here which is at the lower at the low, lower side metal with lots of contacts just to break the inductor if loop is created it's inductor then you have to follow the all the electromagnetic uh, simulation and so all other things has to be taken care and for that uh, you need to use ads or console cadence alone will not work and for such a uh, such a case uh, actually it's a starting of rf also in time generally in analog ic design we need only cadence if you are in rf ic definitely you you have to use ads and console this is being used by uh, qualcom qualcom is the only company in, in india who are, who is working on rf ic rf ic analog design so similar uh, like similar way you can you can add if this is phase shift oscillator where you are adding r and c and creating phase right then some bridge oscillator where bridge will have different required frequency you must have studied some bridge in school you studied some bridge right wheatstone bridge but instead of wheatstone bridge there might be yeah wind bridge sharing bridge maxwell bridge there are many bridges are there so using some bridges maxwell bridge with win bridge you can create some oscillator and you can find out the uh, the oscillating frequency and you have to keep the system in negative feedback just you to remember that the whole theory was for negative feedback but if you are keeping your system in positive there is no problem the so op amp if it is in positive feedback your output is square wave with some hysteresis and that hysteresis will give you phase noise and you can decide this one also right? by choosing the appropriate value of r1 and r2 you can uh, reduce or increase the phase noise right so we are not going into uh, some detail here but this is part of uh, next course those who are studying uh, uh, with me for max mixing up definitely we will have this thing again right. but this is just for those people who are not studying with me for mixing it okay i hope uh, it was not so much boring <laughs> sir <laughs> yes sir yes. are lc series in the road side yeah, if you can uh, create